So another example of a brilliant tool to use for retrieval practice with your classes is carousel learning. So Carousel was created by a practising science teacher in England who had originally created a great little Excel spreadsheet formula that you could use to randomly choose questions for pupils for things like starters or plenaries. He then went on to create this website, which allows pupils to complete quizzes, but with a big difference. They are short answer based, not multiple choice. Now, I found that this was much more useful for my pupils' retrieval practice and revision than the common multiple choice quizzes and their um, answers and their confidence began to improve a lot more by using this. Now, like anything nowadays, there are paid features, but the basic features are still really, really useful. With the free version, you can set up up to four quizzes a week if you want to try it out. And then like quizzes and Quizlet, you could potentially look into creating a department account um, if you want things like extra features like study packs, whiteboards, etc. Now, I'm going to take you through exactly what Carousel looks like. Now, Carousel is not an app. Um, it's only a website, but you can use it on things like Safari um, and Google Chrome, etc. When you first come into it, this is what the teacher view looks like. Um, the first thing that you might want to explore is the community in the top. So if you tap community, this will take you into all of the question banks that are freely available from other teachers. So say, for example, I am teaching chemistry. I might want to put that in. I can select things like um, the type um, that I want as well in terms of if I want it to be SQA, etc., and um, which might be helpful for us. Um, so maybe I'll go into subject being chemistry and search for that and then I might change the exam board to being SQA. So for this now I can see for National 5 and Higher Chemistry people have made question banks already. So for example this one here the Higher Chemistry Unit 2 um, ha already has 163 questions and nine topics in it. So it might be that I want to view this and I can see here the question, the answer and the topic it's from. Now, the topic is really important. I'm going to come back to this later when we talk about making your own question banks. But what I can do with this is I can tap add and I can add it to my own question banks that I can use. Or I can make an editable copy if I think there's maybe some of the wording or things I'd like to change. So that's a really, really nice feature there. There's lots and lots of um, things that have already been uploaded for lots of different subjects. And um, for example, if you're biology, um, I've already made um, sets with about 500 questions in them for an at five and for higher and um, so always have a look at what's available first. Now if I go back to my dashboard there are three main sections here that are important. There's the quiz section, there's the my question bank section and there's the my classes section. We're going to start with the question banks on the bottom left. So down here you can see my question banks and you can see that I've made them global which means that other people can see them in that community. You can also see that I've taken a community question bank down the bottom here as well. I can go into these and I can edit the questions and edit the details once I've uploaded them. But to upload them, you tap create new. Now, you can import Excel spreadsheets into this. So what I did when I created my question banks is I made a spreadsheet that had three columns in it. It had the question, it had the answer, and then it had the topic. And as I said, the topic is really, really important. All you need to do is browse your files to upload it, give it a title, give it a subject, and then you can select the exam board, for example, SQA if you're in Scotland. You can also then choose whether you want to set your quiz um, or question bank as private or global. It's quite nice to set it as global so that other people can use it, but it's completely up to you. And then you just tap upload and it will appear down on this left hand side here. The next thing you'll need to set up when you first go onto Carousel is your classes. So on the bottom right hand side, you can see my classes here. Um, and basically, this is just the pupils first name and last name so that they don't have to log in. There's no logins basically to get into Carousel for pupils and um, just for teachers, um, which is a really, really nice thing. So you upload a spreadsheet of their names so that they can basically pair and you can see their answers for things. So I'm going to show you the practice demo class down here. So if I edit this, you can see some names here. I've got a lot of them being student one and two, just because it's an example one. And what you'll also see is for last name, I don't put their full last name. The reason for this is I might spell it incorrectly, which then means that if they don't spell it exactly the same, they're not going to be able to log into my quiz. And also for data protection, it's just nice to have it as one letter as the last name, if possible. Um, once you upload your class at the start of the year, each of your classes, you can come back here and you can add students and remove students without having to re-upload your spreadsheet again, which is quite a nice feature as well.
So setting up your carousel is the thing that takes the longest in terms of getting your question banks on the bottom left and getting your classes on the bottom right. Once those things are done, it is super, super quick and easy to set a quiz. I think genuinely I can set a quiz in about a minute or two now maximum and I'm going to show you how I do that. So at the top here, I'm going to go to my quizzes and I'm going to go along and tap create new. I'm then going to enter a title. So I'm just going to put delete so I remember to get rid of this later, but you can call it whatever you want. I'm then going to set the deadline. Now, the deadline is more for you than it is for the pupils, um, but I'm going to give them, let's go for a week. Then you select your question bank. So this is all the ones that are on the bottom left of my screen before. So I'm going to pretend that I am teaching my National 5 Biology class. And then I go to topics and I might want to select all. Let's say that we are near our final prelim. So I want to basically revise everything with them. So you can see here, this is why the topics are important. So I've put in the topics in my spreadsheet, which means that I can then select questions based on the topic. So if I've only covered topic one and topic two, I would just select those two and nothing else. And it means the pupils aren't given questions on things they haven't studied yet or haven't learned yet. Now I might have assigned them the whole course here because I'm near the exam, but maybe we haven't quite finished evolution and maybe I think they're already pretty good at cell structure so I'll get rid of that so you can choose whatever topics you'd like there then on the bottom left hand side you need to decide how many questions you're going to give your pupils now this will depend on the scenario when you're going to be doing this so if I'm doing this as a starter I might set them five questions if I'm doing it as a little extension task I might only set them a couple it just depends but if it's a homework I might set them up to say 25 questions maybe um, if this was a full homework exercises for a week so at the moment I'm just going to set three and I'm going to select my questions. So you can, if you're in a rush and you just want to select three random questions, you can just select, say, select random questions at the top and that you can see there has selected three out of three. Um, if you don't like those questions, you can uncheck them and you can basically choose the ones you want. So I'm going to uncheck and I'm going to choose this one. I think maybe they found this question quite hard as well. And let's say I want to try this one too. So you can either choose the ones you want or you can do them, um, or do them randomly or you can do a mix of both. Once you've chosen them, you confirm selection. And then the last thing you need to think about is whether you want them to be able to revise or not. Now, what I mean by this is the pupils, when they log on, which I'll show you in a wee second, have the option, if you allow it, for them to revise flashcards before they take the quiz. Now, if you put revision mode on, which is toggled on here, they'll have access to those flashcards. Then you can decide, do you want them to be able to revise the questions or revise the topics? Now, if I tap revise questions and I've only got three questions, they're just going to be given three flashcards that are the exact answers that I want them to get in that quiz of three questions. That doesn't seem very useful. So for shorter quizzes, I usually tap revise topics, which means they get about 40 flashcards that include maybe the three that I've asked, but also some other things from those topics as well, almost as distractors so that they don't know exactly um, what they're going to get asked when they go into the quiz. So you can either have revised questions, revised topics, or you can just turn that off altogether. Um, I'm going to leave it on so that you can see in a wee second what I mean. Then you tap assign. And all you have to do here is decide which class or classes you want to assign this to. So if I have two higher classes, I might want to select both of them and that will assign to both. But at the moment, I'm just going to go for my practice class. So you can see how quick that was. I just need to give it a title, a date, choose the question bank. I can let it randomly select the questions if I want it to and decide whether they want to be able to revise or not first. Then I just tap create quiz. And it's just saying that I only get four a week. So am I sure that I'm happy to do that? Yes, I am. Then what will happen is it'll take a wee minute to refresh. It'll say this quiz has been successfully created and it will appear at the top here. So you can see these are the quizzes that I've assigned recently and you can see how many have completed it. So I've assigned it to 55 people and you can see my practice test at the top that I did the other day. Um, only one person has completed that so far. If you want a bit of extra detail, you can tap into it and you can see if they've started it or not started it. You can also see if they're answering currently as well, which is quite nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to share this with your classes. So if I go to that quiz I just created that was called delete and I go along to the right hand side there is an actions button which is three dots so ellipses. If I tap that there's lots of different things here that are possible but at the moment I'm just going to tap create link. 
that's going to copy the URL to my clipboard and that is the link that I then post to Teams or to Google Classroom or whatever virtual learning environment I use so that my pupils can then access it. I'm going to paste that in at the moment to show you what it looks like from a pupil's point of view. So this is what it looks like to the pupils when they click that link. They get asked to put in their first name and their last name. Um, but remember to tell them that they shouldn't be putting in um, their full last name if that's what you've done in the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to put student one and I'm going to log in. Now this is where, because I toggled that box that said that they could revise, they get the option to revise here. So if I tap that, because I said revise topic, there's 32 different flashcards and my pupil can go through at their leisure and revise those things. Once they feel they're ready to take the assessment, they can exit and they can tap take quiz. Now it does give this warning because pupils, once they've started the quiz, can't restart it. So they have to go through and finish the whole thing. So it asks, are they sure that they're ready to take that quiz? And I'm gonna say, yes, I'm ready. So as I said, it's multiple, um, sorry, not multiple choice based, it's short answer based. So looking at this, name the two components of the cell membrane. I'm gonna say proteins and phospholipids. I'm then going to pretend that I don't know the answer for this one, so I'm just going to tap next. And I'm then going to enter for this one just the nonsense answer. Now, the great thing about Carousel, this is my favourite thing about it, the best thing compared to other quiz platforms that let you do short answer, is that you do not need to mark them. The pupils mark them themselves. So when I'm a pupil, I go through my questions and then I tap mark quiz. And you can see here that my marking scheme that I created as the teacher now comes up under each of their answers. Now for this question, I have it exactly right. So that means that it says, brilliant, you've got the exact match, the pupil doesn't need to do anything. The system knows that that is the perfect match there. I then tap next and you can see here that I've not written anything, nothing at all. So because I've left it blank, the system knows that it can't be right. So it knows that it's not proteins. So it's given me that it's not the correct answer. Then I tap next. Now this time I have written something and unfortunately the machine can't tell if I'm right or not. Um, it says it's based on that correct answer that's there, so that marking scheme that as a teacher I inputted, it's asking the people where you right or where you wrong. So this gives the people a chance to see the actual marking scheme, to basically work with it and decide if they're right or wrong. Now you might be thinking, what if my pupil decides that they are right um, when they're not actually right? Well, as a teacher, you can look at their answers and override them later which I'll show you. So don't worry about them saying, yes, I was right for this, even if they're not. So we'll try that just now. So I'm going to pretend as a pupil, I can see the answer is not right, but I'm going to say, yes, I'm correct. Now the pupils then get an overview of their answers that they can double check and change them if they need to. And then they have to hit that submit button. So they've got a score of 66%. They need to hit submit for you to be able to see it and mark it on your site. So they tap submit. And with this one, it allows them to retake. So what I usually say to my pupils is, you need to retake it until you get at least 90%, for example, depending on how many questions I've assigned them and how hard the quiz was. So they can go back and see those results. They can revise again, or they can retake that quiz. So let's now, we've seen the pupil view, go back to our teacher view and have a look at what that looks like from a teacher's perspective once a pupil has finished taking the quiz. So again, it might take a little second for it to load. And what we should be able to see here is that I've now submitted. So you can see one out of 55, I've now submitted that quiz. I'm gonna to go to actions again. And there's other things that I can do here, but the one I want at the moment is I'll show you how to analyze results. So as pupils are doing this as homework or in class, I can tap analyze results and I can see what my pupil has got in each question. And this will fill in with as many pupils um, that complete it. So I'm going to show you a little different example of this so you can see a little bit more data. So we'll go to this one that's had a few more people complete it. And I can see here that question one, two and three, and I can see for every pupil, did they get it right or wrong? And I can see the pupil's total on the right hand side. But also I can see for each question how many in that class got it right or the percentage that got it right. So I can see here that everyone managed to get question three right, but only 72% or eight pupils got question one and two right. If I go to topic level at the top there, I can then see by topic, and this is really useful if you've got bigger quizzes that you've set your classes, but I can see here that everyone got all systems go right, but mix up and power it up are two that we really need to work on because not everyone was getting those correct. So this gives you some really nice high level analysis that you don't have to do anything to get, it's already in there. 
Now, let's say that I actually do want to look at my pupils' answers, though, and make sure that they've actually marked them correctly. So I'm going to go to that delete one that I was doing before, and I'm going to click Mark Quiz. If I mark quiz, it says this quiz is going to be locked and your students will no longer to be able to take it. Um, that's fine by me because all my pupils have handed theirs in now. So I'm going to say yes, begin marking. And this is again the feature I absolutely love of this. So I can see my pupils answer and if there was more than one pupil, they would all be listed down here and I can see they got it right. Perfect. Then I can go to the next one and I can see, yep, they didn't answer anything there. So they got that wrong. And for this one, I can see, well, actually they've marked themselves correct but that's not the correct answer that's at the top there. So as a teacher, I can override this and I can change it to incorrect by tapping that button on the right hand side. So that updates that pupil's score and I can really, really easily and quickly see if they have marked them properly. Once I'm done, I can then tap analyze results and I see their new updated results after I've marked it. Now, what I would say is that process of the pupils looking at the marking scheme has been really useful for me. It gets my pupils actually looking at it and making sure that they are engaging with that marking scheme. But then I still have that overview to make sure that my pupils marking is correct. Because it's not always correct. And it's not always the pupils fault that it's not. They maybe don't understand exactly the wording that they need and that's fine. And what I would say is being able to do this now where the pupils mark their own work and I then do an overview of it has changed my marking. For example, I could have set a 20 short answer question quiz for my nat fives a couple of years ago and that would probably have taken me a couple of hours to mark every single person's um, results there whereas this now takes me a maximum of about 15 minutes depending on the difficulty of the question just to have an overview and question by question make sure that people have marked it correctly so I think it's really really handy it's really really useful now there's just another couple of little things I want to show you on here. So again, those three dots on the right hand side, um, you can duplicate quizzes. So if you've used the quiz and you think, ah, they didn't do that great with that, I maybe want them to try that again, the exact same questions, but I don't want to go back and have to find those exact questions again. Um, you can just tap duplicate and that'll duplicate the quiz and you can use it again. So that brings in that thing I mentioned before about how people shouldn't be only doing quizzes once, they should be doing them multiple times. You can archive these if you want. Um, so that it keeps things a bit neater because you can see here I've got quite a few quizzes that I've not really um I'm done with them now so I can get rid of them so I can just tap those three dots tap archive and that'll archive it and it means the pupils can no longer access it however I can by toggling the archive button at the top left hand side and that'll bring back all of the ones that I have deleted previously so as I said, Carousel, one of the best tools that I've used for retrieval practice. Once you have your question banks and your classes filled in at the bottom, which doesn't take very long to set up, then setting quizzes take literally a few minutes. So it's really, really quick and easy. Um, and I would definitely highly recommend you give it a try if you haven't already.